Hi, good morning, everyone. And thanks, Dr. Fu, for this invitation for me have a chance to share my view and experience on tissue engineer and uh, regenerative medicine regarding biomaterials, medical device, and uh, bioprinting. So my name is Peter Yang. So I am bio engineer specializing in biomaterials and the medical device for muscular skeletal tissue regeneration. So the question I have often asked myself about the bioprinting or 3D printing. So why we use bioprinting or 3D printing? So what is or what are the biggest advantage of 3D printing compared to other fabrication technology? Or what is or most are the most uh, limiting factor or factors of 3D bioprinting? So how could we design a bioprinter that enables um, high cell viability and the rapid cell assembly? So that's one of my uh, main focus of my life in the bioprinting. So does anyone know about this? Imaging or photo. So from this photo, we can say the one patient and the one surgeon. So, so this is a, a soldier who lost four limbs in Iraq war. And the professor in John Hopkins, so helped him to restore his two, two limbs from two recently diseased, diseased people. So this was a huge news in, uh, in regenerative medicine. So the surgeon actually restored his uh, hand function after operations. So the question, so the tissue, the tissue engineer or regenerative medicine the concept was proposed to say to solve the shortage of the uh, organ transplants. So can we engineer the limb of the body to restore the lost function of the patient? So what if we can? So we we'll totally change the practice of medicine. So today I would like to briefly share with you the brief history of modern biomaterials, brief history of tissue engineering in the field, or the tissue engineering principle, and the challenge we are facing, and our bioprinting or the Bible printer and its application. So biomaterials application can be traced back to 5,000 to 7,000 years ago. The ancient Egyptians used arrows to repair lost teeth. However, as a modern discipline, or the discipline of the modern biomaterials, has short history. So since 1960s, the British uh, surgeon, Dr. Charlie, significantly improved the design of artificial hip implant. So artificial hip implant surgery has received huge success to restore patient function. So since then, the material engineer and the scientist study rigorously examine the biocompatibility of the materials including metal, polymer, ceramic and the composite. So since 1980 and the 1990s, so the biomaterials uh, research merged from two fields, biology, medicine and engineering. Actually since 1990s, the main driving force of biomaterials application actually is bio. So as a bioengineer myself, we learn principle of biology and the medicine, try to use this principle to apply for design or fabrication of new biomaterials and medical device to improve the patient care. So as I mentioned, in the 1990s, the concept of tissue engineering was proposed to solve the shortage of organ transplants. So they have three components. One is scaffold, 
which is porous structure made of the bioresorbable polymer, uh, ceramic or metal or composite. And then we loaded all kinds of cells, including stem cells, into the pore structure, and then loaded different signals. So the signals, the most common signal is biochemical signal, is growth factors, or have biomechanical signal, biophysical signal, or bioelectrical or biophysical signals. So these signals will pass to the cell, will try to guide the cell function. So, however, after 10 years efforts, so the previous generation of TSO engineers realized uh, it's not simple just combine the scaffold, the cell or signal together. So the engineer, the tissue or organ has to be functional. So they add one more component, let's go by mechanics. So this tissue or organ has to be functional and active with the daily livings. So that's called functional tissue engineering. So right now, I think we are still facing three fundamental questions for the challenges. The first one is the cell source, is stem cell. So every people knows like a fertilized egg cell is orange or the single stem cell. Then, so right now for the treatment, so from patient itself or from the other donors. So how you grow the stem cell as many, as soon as possible to the clinical relevant uh, scale. Second, so once you have to continue the cell, so cell have a large volume. So how the individual cell get a nutrient or oxygen? So that's uh, like function of the vascularization. So that's about the cell viability. So cell viability considered largest or the biggest energy in our field. The third component is the micro environment. So you have a cell, have enough number of cells, and cell can get survived. But what a cell should do? What's the function of cell, like cell fate? So become the stem cell become neural or become muscle cell, become bone cell. Be So how we deliver signal into the cell at the right time, right location, right dosage, right kind is very challenging. So right now, in our field, we are working on the three fundamental questions. So what's in common between like a tissue engineer and the biomaterials as micro, like a, say, macro environment? So somehow the macro environment, uh, some inter exchange like the extra strain matrix or the scaffold or by inspired by materials. So it's a two-way two traffic. So first of all, we load the cell into the porous structure. So uh, and the cells receive signal from the, the porous structure. And also cell, it will lay out its own extra strain matrix, produce all kinds of protein cytokines. And also the modifying the surrounding environment. So that's a two-way traffic. So ultimate change, I said, is cell viability. So I have to remember, so every time we increase the size, for the surface, just two times increase. However, for the volume, like three times three increase. So that's the reason. So right now, cell viability or vascularization is the biggest challenge in our field. So since 2012, so because we're are facing the vascularization challenge. So the field have like a like a divergent trend. So one, we make it a small, like a miniature tissue or organ for the drug screening for the pharmaceutical industries. So the second uh, direction is like a found like a US Army medical research and the materials fund. The uh, Armed Force Institute of Regional Medicine. So right now they have five uh, directions. So they go within five years, they can look at and put in the clinic trial, like the extremity regen regeneration, and also like a composite tissue, eye graph, eye transplantation and immune modulation. So this is one of the project I show in the first slide. So the John Hopkins professors try to like use disease to 
uh, people's limb to repair the injured soldiers to the limb. And also in our field, so the, the journal is uh, tissue engineering, the official journal of the t is tissue engineering. So each year, so the, uh, the editor-in-chief will invite one uh, group to summarize, to overview in the last year, the progress. So this year, so, haven't, so, for the, so this is uh, for the 2015 uh, review paper. So for this 2016 review paper has not come out yet. So in the two, so 2015 review from uh, Gordana's group from uh, Columbia University. So she summarized the three uh, main progress in the year of 2015. So first is stem cell, actually the, like the IPS cell. So IPS cell, so actually get a Nobel Prize in 2012 because basically the, from the human skin cell or maybe circulating blood cell, they engineer them back in the uh, embryonic stem cell stage. So that so from the skin cell, embryonic stem cell stage, they can differentiate into all kinds of the tissue. A second is like the micro uh, platform and the cancer modeling. So this is like a, like we say, like a micro, micro environment. So you, because we have difficulty to solve the challenge for the vascularization in the large volume. So we made mediator tissue and then used for them for the drug screening. So this, uh, the third part, the whole organ engineering. So basically the people use uh, like from the other donor's tissue or organ and decellulize it and then maintain the structure and then repopulate with the patient's stem cell and try to regenerate the whole tissue or organ and for transplantation. So right now for the whole organ engineering succeeded in the mouse and the rat, but it also but in the small scale, right now the people try to do it in the large animal like a pig. So what though of the three printing or bioprinting can do in the tissue engineering and the digital medicine? So mainly for the two, like I said, tissue engineering we are facing challenges in vasculature. So from the slides we can say, so you have artery, you have vein, so artery is a heart pumping the blood into the body. And the wings, they will collect the, the, the blood back into the heart. So the between, you have vascular bed from the large vessel, artery to small artery, and then to the capillary, and then back to the capillary to the vein. So this is, vascular bed is extremely challenging. Why? Because the challenge here, so the distance between individual cell and the closest of capillary has been around 100, 300 micron, the distance. Beyond that, the individual cell will suffer like process, will suffer lacking the nutrition or like uh, oxygen. So our body have trillions, trillions of cells. So how to wire the individual capillary into individual cell, that's extremely challenging. The second part, so, our body, so here is just one example, like the, like, like the cortical bone. So cortical bone, so unit is called the hardware system. So in here we can say, this is artery and the wing and the capillary. So in the surrounding, so here peripheral to the, the wing for the, for the capillary is around 250 microns. So the cell surrounding this close the capillary is perfectly satisfied the requirement for the diffusion of nutrient and the oxygen. So all the cell can survive here. So this, so this like a, like a vasculature and also the biomimetic complexity. So the sense like the, all the body, the structure or the cell distribution or the capillary distribution is not homogeneous. It's always heterogeneous the spatially and the temporary distribution. So this entails the advantage of 3D printing. So 3D printing, because by, by definition, so 
we can easily change the structure and uh, compose it in the same plane in the different location in the different uh, in the in the 2d and the 3d so that gives us power to mimicking the, the tissue the complexity and also to enabling fabricate of the vasculature in a 3d structure so here, like uh, some uh, uh, the 3D technology, like inkjet and uh, stereolithography, and also extrusion based, and the FDM. So, so you, I think uh, you are familiar with this 3D printing technology. So, this all the 3D print technology has been used for the bioprinting. So, right now for bioprinting, so we are we are characterized too. So, why is a cellulized? the graft, so without a cell. So why is cellulized graft within cell? So because with, without cell, so the requirement for the 3D print technology is different. So for example, so for this acellulized, like a vascular graft, so we can use, so we can, we can use, we have for the condition of the 3D printing can be, we can use harsh chemical, we can use high temperature, we can get like a more accurate uh, spatial distribution because we know we have no concern about like a cell and the bio agent. So the cell by agent is very sensitive to the harsh chemical and the, and the high temperature. So here we show some like a very nice like the vascular uh, like artery the the branch. So this once we fabricate this, we can load the cell and the bioagent, the growth factor, the, the chemical sensitive and the, the heat, the heat sensitive, the cell and the, and the growth factor. After fabrication, we can load it. So second part, like a cell laden uh, vascular, so we can show here, so we can load the cell. So this is a cell loaded hydrogel. So over time, actually the individual particles making together form like a, in, a structure integrate the, like the vessel, the blood vessel. So this one, so we, we can say, so because we load the cell, so the, the 3D print technology has to be have high, extremely conditioned for the chemicals. So has to, we cannot use toxic chemical, we cannot use high Temperature, so this is all limited. So it's a trade-off here. So you, if you can hire the like a cell in, in order to have higher cell viability, so you have to use less. Like you have to cannot use like toxic environment and cannot use high temperature environment. So this is trade-off. However, the optimal condition, the optimal the criteria is cell viability. If cell cannot survive. Cell will not grow. Cell cannot be functional because functional is what we are, is what is the end point for the tissue engineer and the regenerative medicine. So have to be able to restore the loss of the function of the patient. So now for the scripture, in the few, the past few slides, we talk about large vessel graft. However, so the vascular bed, you have large vessel graft and also capillary bed. So for the people also use all kinds of uh, technology for try to mimicking re-engineer the microvasculature. So that's capillary. So for example, the one paper so the pop I use like a microfluid device. They use P PDM PDMS the mode and the cost the collagen with the cell. They can form very nice vascular vascular bed and also. The people develop like the printing the sugar, and then the and the casting the cell with the hydrogel. So hydrogel is basically ninety five percent or ninety nine percent of water, only one percent and the five percent the polymer network. So this polymer network can contain the cell. So once uh, because the sugar forms the network, the sugar will out into the water. So, so leave the open space, the lumen. So the cell actually, they can, we can use this lumen for the perfusion. So this, this is a, 
right now the current like at once. So in our life, so what we try to do? So we try to combine the large blood vessel and the capillary together. So from here, so schematic, we can see here, so three components. The first component is rigid, the, like a polymer or the composite. So this will provide structure, guidance, and the structure integrity or the mechanical support. And here, here like the major vessel. So major vessel is made of cell with hydrogel. And in between, you have a lot of the porous structure. So this is capillary. So capillary is a third component. You have the different cell and the, and the tissue specific cell and the capillary and also di a different hydrogel because different, different uh, mechanical property have, need a different uh, signals and have different functions. So, so we have like a porous, porous structure made of the rigid polymer or the composite. We have major vessel. And also we have a between have a capillary. So this is like a new future direction. So in order to realize this idea, so we develop, uh, it's called a hybrid printer. So one stop shop by a printer. So the technology has been out there for more than 20 years. However, so we combine them together for Compose, we try to engineer the composite vascularized tissue engineer construct. So this, what this can do, they combine soft and hard multifunction material together. For example, the first we have like sample holder, we can use F molten material extrusion, make the different like a geometry and the structure and the polar structure. So this will define the shape and the Tender. Then we will lower the sample holder into the, the pre-polymer solution, the containers, and then raise it up. So this is a polymer solution exposed to the visible light. So we use visible light. So right now you can use the UV light and the visible light. So UV light have potential to damage the DNA or cell. So we use visible light. So we have like more cell friendly, have cell viability. And so once the cell, once the pre-polymer solution exposed to the by the way, become, uh, will gel and become solid. So here like a solid cell, hydrogel, and also like a solid uh, uh, strut made of the bilateral polymer or ceramic or like a composite. And also the between, in this between the pores, actually you can use syringe based to put other types of cell or the by agent there. So right now, if you look at, uh, if you read uh, my job printing, they use syringe based. So syringe based uh, uh, by printing, there are a lot of advantage and also have certain disadvantage. The first of all, you have limited. So for the, in, in order to use syringe to print, to control the shape, uh, the, the accuracy, so the viscosity, need to be high because you need to maintain the shape. And also once the cell passes the needle of the syringe, they will sh experience shear stress. Shear stress may have some, uh, may potentially uh, damage, uh, affect the cell viability. But for this, for the, like uh, the container, because like the, the water-like container, so you have like a wide range of the viscosity. So you have a wide range of the cell material ch choice. So here is some sample we made. So here like it's just one single, single modular. So this is like a FDM, so you extrude it. So you make a different shape. This is like a long bone shape in the pore is more like a austere structure. So you can maintain the cell. So you can make a different shape. So here just like the studies graphic. So the green, the green color indicates cell. So this cell is a green fluorescence emission. So you can make a different shape. It's here like a like a, the, the larger vessel, like a bifurcating structure. So if you combine the two modulars, just like FDM and, and the stylus graphic. So here, for example, this one we shows we have 95% the uh, porosity. And uh, so 5% the rigid, 
scaffold and the 95% like hydrogel. And also you can see here the interface sameness. That's very important because we want to make the, there's no deep, like the delamination between the different material component. And also this can reach the 95% uh, like a hydrogel can reach sigma megapascal mechanical power reaction extremely high. And here, so like the indication like, like a cartilage like and the bone like to mimicking the interface. And here, like the three, like three, here just a demonstration, we can make a three location, or the four location, the different location have different cell and the different uh, growth factors to actually mimicking the biomechanical complexity. So this one can show like, like, a, like the, the major blood vessel and also like the supported by the, uh, the region of plastic. If you combine the three modular, so like the, uh, stereolithography and the FDM and also syringe based. So you can, so the surrounding, the porous structure, you can use syringe to load the different the cell type or different uh, 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 bio, uh, growth factors. So we can use perfusible, like wash structures. So I, I think I, I prepared one, one case how to like uh, use 3D printing to, to, to use for the real medical indication. So this is like an osteolacrosis hip. So there's many reasons what happened. So like an osteolacrosis hip. So once this disease occurs, so the, fem the femur head of the bone will collapse. Uh, anyway, I want to skip this. So I think of in our field, because uh, particular tissue engineer or the regional medicine, we are uh, focused on precision or personalized medicine. So 3D printing or 3D bioprinting will uh, offer the advantage. We allow, enable us to do this, like a personalized because different, uh, like a geometry, a lighting me, and also because uh, different uh, people, because because different like a gen genetic difference. So maybe some patient will be more uh, sensitive to certain drugs. By the 3D bioprinting, we can make the personalized or precision medicine have better treatment or better outcome for the, uh, for the health, healthcare industry. And also the two, the two applications, why is human organ on chip? So basically we can make a miniature, the structure or the organ or tissue for the drug screening to, to before we use uh, the prescription of the drug for the patient, we really can we know so what patient, the patient more sensitive, what kind of type of the drug. And also for like for the bacterial infection, so what like the, the drug will more, uh, so the, 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 the bacteria in the patient more sensitive to, to certain like uh, antibiotics, and for the human body shops, so we can make uh, like a life, life size uh, tissue replacement for the better treatment. So here's my understanding, like uh, a biomedical translation research breakthrough. So we have to multiple interdisciplinary. So. So myself is like a bioengineer by training, the materials engineer or the scientist by training. But right now, my, my life is majority doing like the uh, biomedical, biomedical device. So we were very closely working with like a surgeon and the biologist and all kind, lots of like also materials engineer. So here's my uh, team and all the founding agent. Thank you very much. <laughs>